Hello, I'm Sharon Wilson, publisher of Resort Trades Magazine. Uh, we have a great presentation here ready for you coming up. <laughs> Annie Tumlin from Global Connections. But before I tell you more about Annie, let me just mention that uh, if you missed our recent presentations, I uh, know last week or last month, really, uh, prior to Thanksgiving, we had uh, uh, Joe Naiman, who operates RMC Resort Management. And then we've also had Jimmy Dans with Travel Resorts of America telling us about the camping uh, resort uh, business. Very interesting. And uh, IT consultant Susie Morrison, who uh, is a fabulous IT person. So if you missed any of those, go to our YouTube channel at Resort Trades. And while you're there, please subscribe, hit the uh, little bell icon uh, so you don't miss being part of the resort family. Uh, we're trying to knit all the our vacation ownership world together as much as possible by bringing you these free presentations. So please, I hope you'll avail yourself, answer or, or come with, prepared with questions, etc. Anyway, uh, welcome Annie. We have uh, Annie is director of creative plus digital marketing at Global Connections. And uh, I don't know if you, uh, the mail has been pretty delayed lately, but if you've received your copy of December's Resort Trades Magazine, we have a lovely article in there called The Virtual Family, which Annie wrote. And uh, it, it will describe a lot or fill in some of the blanks that you, may have wondered about in dealing with communicating with your digital audience. Uh, but Annie will fill us in on even greater detail. So Annie, thank you for, for coming. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Sharon and Carrie and the rest of the Resort Trades team. Um, I'm just so honored to be a part of these. I really enjoyed watching them. I've got some great um, info from some of the other ones that I've watched and it's just really fun to be a part of doing it for you guys. So um, thanks for spending your lunch break with me. And um, I hope that you get a little bit of tidbits from me and or you watch it later again and again. It'll be on the YouTube channel. Marketing during a pandemic, building a digital relationship amidst uncertainty, a.k.a. jumping into an erupting volcano. It's been quite a ride for all of us. Um, not only just as people in the world right now who we've had to deal with this, but as marketers. So I wanted to put together some of the stuff that we've learned um, on my team and just some great ideas to go forward with your efforts now. Now that we're kind of all, you know, we've survived the initial bump and we are headed into the new horizon, but things are still looking different. And so I just wanted to share some of the, the great stuff that we've learned. So uh, let's see. I'm going to go. There we go. Getting control of my slides here. So we're going to go through a few different things. Um, and basically, innovative thinking, evolved solutions, and transparent pandemic communication, aka flying by the seats of our pants. Finding your brand relevance during the confusion. So in the beginning, I admit, I was a little frozen in fear. The world began unraveling with shocking news each day. Sports events were canceled. All the large events were canceled. Sports seasons were canceled. Cruise ships stuck in the middle of the ocean. Um, Citywide mandated shutdowns kept coming in. So we're working from home. We're schooling from home. And we think it's going to be two weeks. Now it's been, what has it even been? Five years? Ten months? Um, and so I admit, as a marketer, I thought, what is the point? Why? How can I even talk to these people right now when we're all dealing with this? And especially in the world of travel, everything kind of just shut down in its tracks um, for a little bit. But, um, you know, I knew it would keep going, but I just didn't know exactly where to go and what to do from there. Um, and at that time, I received a marketing email. Lo and behold, I was reading marketing emails still, so that made me feel a little better, but it was from an Instagram coach. His name's Tyler McCall. 
Um, I just love his, his content. And he emailed and it said, hey, I bet you're feeling a little shy about marketing right now during this pandemic because, um, you know, at that time we were getting feedback from people. Sometimes when we'd send out an email, why would you send this email out right now? You know, and, and, you know, rightly so. It was just a really confusing time. But Tyler's marketing email, he kind of gave me the permission that I needed to say, hey, people still want to read people's stuff. We're still existing in life. And um, he gave me the permission to say, my brand exists for a purpose. Our customers expect us to sell. That's the reason they follow us. And heck, we are all in travel industry here. So we know travel is going to continue and people love a reason to dream about an escape especially during all the craziness. So a few of the things I learned during that point was um, just first defining your brand value, which of course is important all the time, but especially it was important at that point. Um, and just remember why you're here and what you're here to do. What do we bring a value to our current and potential customers? Why do they love us? What do they expect to hear from us? Um, in our case, and many of your cases that are watching in the travel in industry, it's our ability to offer travel. It's something we all love and need. It's something that releases stress. Um, one of my favorite travel quotes from our president and CEO, Tom Lyons, he said, travel grants us all opportunities to deepen relationships with each other, create incredible memories and experience cultures outside of our own, making the world a little smaller and more intimate each time we, ret we return home. So I just love that. And it just makes me, you know, feel good about what I do and feel good about the ability to offer that to our customers. Um, the next point, defining your relevant services. Why is my brand important right here, right now? Now, all of us in this world, we have experienced definite changes in our inventory, relationships with our vendors, all kinds of new restrictions and rules and regulations that have um, you know, blanketed our industry and it does look different and um, it has taken some adjusting to get used to, uh, you know, as our, as companies, what we're able to offer to people, what we aren't able to offer people right now and just knowing how to market that to people. So keeping in mind that even though travel is different and still it's still different to this day, it's still relevant. And um, one of the things my team and I did was we looked at, you know, what service do we have that is super duper relevant at this point? And it was drivable condos. So we began to put our efforts into creating a really cool marketing campaign around road trips. But first, before we got into all of that, this was still in the very beginning. And we wanted to still be able to talk to our people, um, communicate with them, inspire them to travel. And um, we wanted to start out small to to kind of ease our way into their inboxes and make sure that we weren't being overbearing, but we were still being present because, um, you know, our company, we offer a membership. So our memberships were still live. We still wanted our people to use our services. And we had to just kind of figure out how to gently nudge them in the beginning um, before we jumped into that road trip campaign. So we created a ton of blogs, emails, social media posts around finding things to do at home to inspire travel. Um, some great things that came out of it. We created a new page on our membership site that was just a whole, um, uh, I'm at a loss for words. It, we uh, created a webinar page that gave us a space to put all the vendor webinars that we've ever done. We do them monthly. Um, and we made one space for them all and we marketed the heck out of that page because we wanted people going to it, watching what we did, um, what we had to offer and then inspiring them to think about travel, even if it was going to be in the future. Um, and then another great thing we did, we took advantage of all the creative minds out there. There are a ton of travel companies. They have a ton of big budgets and they do a lot of very cool things and you can curate their content and then come back, bring it to your channel and share it from your channel, obviously crediting them and, and linking to the right places. But there was just so much cool virtual, um, so many cool virtual things back then from going on Disney rides to David Attenborough had a virtual Great Barrier Reef tour. Royal Caribbean did a super cool thing where they did um, like you were on a cruise so that every morning they'd send you the cruise compass and they'd send you cocktail recipes and and what the theme of the night's dinner was going to be and, and all kinds of 
fun stuff. So we really took a lot of that and then just kind of sent it out to our members and, and gave them some cool things to look at. Um, at our blog has always been pretty heavily engaged, but since March, you know, since people have been at home and, and looking for things to do and uh, everything, we've seen 39% more users, 40% more sessions, and 25% more page views. And we saw that right off the get-go when we started all of these new blogs and, and inspirational ideas. And that gave us, you know, some courage, like, hey, people people still do want to hear from us, and they're just going to hear from us in a different way right now. So once we saw that people were liking what we were doing, we dug into the Great American Road Trip campaign. And that was a super cool thing we did in May, and it was a whole month of all kinds of road trip itineraries, condo meal recipes that you could cook, national diners and dives, you know, places to stop on your way, out outdoor activities that you could do, national parks you could drive through, beautiful things to see while you couldn't necessarily be doing all the normal stuff on vacation. Um, and then we've continually seen a steadily, steady increase in our bookings. Um, and so it's just good to know people were consuming our content, people were continuing to travel, and that's really given us the juice to keep on going and, and keep doing what we're doing. Um, okay. Oh, you know, I kind of just blew right through that slide without telling you guys what I was doing. Okay. The next one, here we go. Defining your brand boundaries. Uh, something we stumbled on initially was feeling the need to know it all. And um, so this slide is about breaking that down and bringing out clear boundaries to focus on and knowing you don't have to be the end all be all people come to you for something specific. So my first point here, know your place and rock it. So who are you and what do people get from you? In the beginning, we had a lot of reservation cancellations, obviously with all the restrictions and the craziness going on, but we had a lot of questions about, you know, can I rebook? Can I travel here? Can I travel there? Um, do I have to quarantine here? Do I have to quarantine there? And we're still getting those questions all the time. And at first we tried to use our team to answer every single question. We were being Google for thousands of people and we were stressing ourselves out to the max. And, you know, we couldn't be putting out content with travel information when travel information was evolving every five minutes. But it was hard because we thought as a travel company, you know, we do need to have every single answer for every single person. But we realized we need to put their responsibility back on the members themselves, the travelers. And we want to direct them to the source. We don't always have to be the source, but we can direct them to the correct sources. And so that goes to the next point, empowering your customers. Give them the ability to make the decisions for themselves. Take some of that pressure off yourself. You know, I can go to CDC and travel.gov.state five times a day if I want to, but I can't do that for 5,000 people. So we continually put out, you know, the appropriate sites for people to be checking and continually reminded people to be checking them. But we didn't have that pressure now to, you know, have all those answers for ourselves. Um, I watched a Resort Trades um, lunch bunch back in September, and it was with David Struva from ADS Consulting. And I love the part he was talking about encouraging us to empower customers with knowledge. And he was basically saying like, that's your that's your key to everything. And he said, you know, you give them the power or the information to make informed decisions. You continually implement that into all your materials and, you know, you're taking some of the workload off of yourself. So um, the third thing, why find your why and share it. Offer it with gusto and curate your materials to show it off. So back to the slide we were just on, you know, defining your brand and your relevance. Our entire industry, we give people the opportunity to spend time together, to meet with their families, to create, to create memories and get away and enjoy each other. We have the power to bring families together and that's pretty cool. And that power didn't go away with COVID and the need for people to get together with their families and to get away from their everyday lives, that didn't go away with COVID. Um, and so we just began to adapt our materials to that why. And we just, you know, it's, it's easier to get behind all the stuff that you're doing and feel good about it when you really feel good about that why. And getting people to be able to spend time with their families and travel together and enjoy all these new experiences, that's a pretty cool why. And that makes things 
a little easier to do. All right, going to my next one. Okay, so managing the message, bringing empathy into all communication. So in the beginning, I keep saying that, <laughs> uh, it was we were getting a little caught in the blame game. You know, customers are saying, well, this this whole crazy thing isn't my fault, so you need to fix it. And customer service representatives, marketing people, we think, well, it's not our fault either. You know, we don't, uh, why should we stop? Why should, we can't, we can't change this either. And we're all going to run ourselves straight into the ground if we don't, if we don't, you know, if, if we don't figure out better ways to give back to our members, we can't just refund and we can't just do this and that. And so it was a struggle in the beginning. And um, there was a lot of emotion. There was emotion from the customers themselves. There was emotion from the customer representative, the, the agents and the marketing people, because, you know, we're going through a lot of emotion as well. And we're getting that heat from customers and we're trying not to put the heat back and we're trying to put smiles on our faces every day. So um, we realized, OK, we need to make our materials and make our responses surrounded with empathy for these customers, because probably you and I. I did, but probably you did as well. Experienced some losses in travel, and your can your trips got canceled, and you lost money maybe. And you know, COVID canceled so many travel plans. And as we all know, travel is huge. It's many times one of the biggest things we look forward to in our years. And there was some really heartbreaking circumstances for many people that weren't able to go on their trips. Um, myself, for an example, I had my 40th birthday and my mom surprised me. We were going to go to Europe on a river cruise and I'd never been to Europe. I'd never been on a river cruise and this wasn't to be until October, but you know, in March and April and May, and we're like, okay, it's probably going to get canceled, but we had travel insurance, but our flights, I, they weren't canceled right at that moment yet. And it was just very stressful not knowing if we were going to lose lots and lots of money that we had already put into it, not knowing if we were going to be going out of the country. You know, it was just a really stressful time. So I really take that experience and try to, you know, remember all the emotion that I was feeling and be able to put that into my marketing materials um, of how I talk to members and how I, you know, relate to their emotions. So that's just a good thing to use as inspiration for your communication and your content. Uh, so next point, now that you've found your empathy for them, it's okay to ask for theirs too. Um, one of the best things we found on with our company was leveling with our customers. And maybe they might not like the answer that you have to tell them, but when you are able to take the time and explain why you have that answer um, and be as transparent as you can. Like, obviously you can't go into all the details with them, but um, the more honest and the more transparent that you can be in your communication, the more respect they're gonna feel and the more understanding they're gonna have and the more empathy they're gonna have for your decisions. So that was just, I feel like this year has really allowed us to grow a little bit closer to our customers and that's pretty cool. Like even as challenging as it was, the the level of respect that I feel we've shown for them and they've shown for us after all the emotion has been really great. Um, my next point, show them that your company cares about them. And so one of the things that we did was we created a series of emails from our president and CEO to address common questions with a crafted honesty. Um, and these were very well received. Because, you know, people like to hear from the boss and they like to go, hey, I just got an email from the president and here's what he said. And, you know, it's not like you can change some answers, but you can at least, like I said, give them a little bit of that transparency. And when it's coming from the boss, that's even better. Um, we have pretty great open rates already on our emails, but these babies soared like rockets. We had, I think our 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 biggest open rate was like a 54%, which is huge for us. So um, we knew people like that. So we've continued to provide these updates. It was right in the beginning that we started, you know, back in March and April, but we've continued to do them throughout because we found that people really, really like them. 
And then from these emails, we scripted our responses for member services agents, for our marketing team, for anyone who was going to be in contact with um, members so that we made sure anyone who we're talking to, we are going to be telling them the same message and it's going to be blanketed across everywhere and we're all on the same page. And then lastly, stay aware, stay aware of what your industry friends are doing. Subscribe to industry publications, social media, email lists, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the things that was helpful for me during all of this, I would go on to some either competitors pages or just kind of different people in the industry and look at their social media and look at their reviews because, you know, we we had some ups and downs there in the beginning, but it was really great for me to be able to go on to somebody else's page and and go, OK, we're not the only ones getting our buns handed to us sometimes, you know, and um, and that's OK. And and it's nice to see what other people how other people answer the either the happy reviews or the negative reviews and kind of incorporate some of their ideas into your stuff and then hope that what whatever you're putting out there people are looking at as well and saying, oh, that was a good idea of how to respond. I'm going to take that little nugget and I'm going to use it in what else I do next. Um, and then another great thing, take advantage of all the free content that's out there right now, like these wonderful resort trade lunches. Um, these are free. They're, they're little bits of just great knowledge from amazing people. <laughs> um, but really I have, I have gotten, so many great things from these and there's so many people are doing it. So really take advantage of that. Um, let's see where I'm lost myself here. Oh, and then um, one company that I wanted to bring up that I love, it's called really good emails. Um, I, I follow them and get a lot of great ideas from them. I heard the, the founder speak at a conference like two years ago when we could still do conferences. Um, and he started that company because he wanted to share the love with marketers everywhere. Um, and he shares codes from hundreds of really good emails that he loves and that, that the people who follow him send him emails that, you know, they like this one. So they'll put it out there. And I just love his, his idea about it all because he says, why do we have to be so secretive? We're all marketers in this together. We're all do looking for the same thing. You know, we all have the same goals. So why not share the love? Um, and when you're when you're looking at other people, you should be seeing what you're doing. And if you don't, you're either, you know, super ahead of the game or maybe really off base. And just remember, imitation is the biggest form of flattery. So if you see your ideas out there, you know, um, the road trip, for example, we didn't invent the road trip and we didn't invent the idea to drive to a vacation right now instead of flying because you can't fly. So um at first, you know, it's like, ah, I'm doing the road trip campaign. They can't be doing it too. But, you know, it, it feels good to see your ideas out there because you know you're doing something right. And then um, just lastly about this, don't forget to share all this info that you have with your team, especially working remotely. It can be hard to keep everyone in the loop. But um, just keep remembering to update everybody and all your different your different teams throughout your company. All right. My next slide is making your customers work for you on social media. So when you empower them with all this great knowledge that you've created for them, encourage them to use it and to get social and to share it. Um, you can acquire so much real and free content from your social media. Um, our road trip campaign, for example, we got tons of fun testimonials and photos um, of people just loving the road trip. And we're always doing things, you know, contests and sharing testimonials and all that. But one of my favorite things that we do is a annual photo contest where we get um, vacation photos from our members. And when I first started working at this company, that is where I got my my most downright view of what this membership was all about. And I learned, look at all these families that that are able to take vacations and spend time together because of the services that we offer. And that that was just one of the coolest ways for me to learn about our membership, even more than, you know, reading the handbook and reading this and that and the other. When I got down and I saw people, real people experiencing it and loving it and, you know, getting memories forever from it, that's when I really understood our membership. So I love to get all that kind of stuff from our members because 
if it helps me as a marketer understand our membership, what does it do to your customer, your potential customers try to understand your membership? Like it's awesome. It's the best way for them to get to know it. So you can get all that on social media and it can be free. You know, I mean, for sure have them with all the waivers and everything out there, but um, what a great way to acquire so much marketing content for free. Um, social media is a great communication hub too. Let your customers talk to each other, let them answer each other's questions, keep an eye on it obviously and step in when needed. But um, we love watching our members talk to each other and say, oh, you didn't see this, check out this, or this is a way you know, so-and-so worked for me. Um, we find also many members coming to our defense. If someone gets on there and has a complaint, you know, someone else might go, oh, hey, we, you know, that's odd that you experienced that. Have you ever tried this? You know, however they want to do it. But it's just such a great communication hub for each other. And they can inspire each other on their road trips and, um, you know, whatever, whatever you're currently marketing. Um, and, oh, I had another point, but I just, it just flew out of my, my brain. So I'm going to go to my next one. Stay in your lane. Define your place and stay in your lane. This is going back to defining your brand boundaries in the same kind of respect, regard. Find your most engaged social channels and then stay there and work the heck out of it. Um, I believe that you don't have to be everywhere. I know that some marketers like to be everywhere and there's a little bit of disagreement on this topic, but um, for, our, for our place, we found that our customers are engaging on Facebook, they're on blogs and they're on emails and they love to go, they love to engage in all those three things. And um, we've tried other other channels. They haven't, you know, been as widely received. And so our target person is right there on these places. And we just said, you know, why waste resources on other other channels? Um, your target customer isn't on a million different channels. I mean, you know, you, me, we we each have our own preferences. And you know, if someone's trying to target me, a forty one year old mom marketer they're going to know where to go because of, you know, the most popular things that women like me tend to go on. Now I do get on TikTok and things like that because I do have three teenagers. So, you know, and as a marketer, obviously you're staying aware of everything that's out there, but um, we find that the best thing that works for us is to just put out some awesome content where our members are and just keep putting it out there. All right, now let's go to my last slide here. And this is incorporating and adapting. Oops, now I'm blocking you. There you go. Incorporating and adapting to member feedback. Um, so repurposing common customer questions, concerns, and reviews using the angriest member and the happiest member and taking all of the information that you have from your customers and then putting it right back out there to them in your content. Um, during this fantastic COVID time, we've had months of inundated feedback from our members and we haven't even had to ask for it. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's also, it's been a lot, but we've, we've been able to learn so much from what our members are, are having questions about and what they're concerned about. Um, and this helps you understand your target even more. So what are they happy about? What are they mad about? What what cool little blurb did you get from one person's email that you never thought of it that way? Um, and then just going back to the, keeping empathy and all your communication and cultivating your digital relationship even more by creating more transparency and trust by using their feedback. And um, you're continually empowering your members with knowledge and allowing them to feel in control. And when they're feeling in control, they're loving the product. And when they're loving the product, they're using it more. They're marketing it for you. They're becoming a lifetime member who's going to create value forever for you. Um, you know, sometimes conversion can be hard to quantify on things like this. Do we really know if this is reducing our call volume or or increasing our bookings? You know, it's hard to tell when you're when everything's through your marketing, you know, but um, we look at it more as a tool we're providing for free to our members. We're educating them. We're helping them learn about their membership. We're increasing their satisfaction, increasing their lifetime value. You know, we're getting referrals. We, it just, it makes a lot of sense to, to be the smartest that you can be with the content that you're giving to them. And then, um, 
Oh, I skipped over surveys. That is uh, something that we normally do all the time. And but like I said, with COVID, we got we got all of it without even asking. So it worked out well for us this year. Um, OK, so lastly, my third point on here is transform your new knowledge into strategy. So um, something awesome that we got out, we got from COVID um, is a new chat feature that we started on our website. Um, because our call you our, our call volume was coreza in the beginning and it um, took a lot of adjusting and we had to quickly be proactive and, and figure out ways that you know we could talk to our members in different ways than just on the phone because you know our phone our calls were just out of control as were most companies I mean I had a refrigerator issue with Sears and I I don't know that I've ever sat on hold for that long in my life of all the companies I've ever called. So, but I had sympathy, you know, and empathy with them because I, we were going through the same thing. So, um, anyway, I don't know. I'm talking about Sears now and now I'm back. Okay. So from our, from the member feed feedback, um, we got information to evolve our processes with the chat and we created educational digital pieces and our member service responses and our letters from the CEO. And we, we got so much um, great educational stuff to throw back at them. And like I said, in the beginning, we just got to know our members a whole lot more. And I feel like they got to know us a whole lot more and um, it's just been kind of cool. Um, another thing we did, we, we increased our automated reservation management. So we've always had, you know, some automation in there and, um, but a lot of times our services have been strictly through phone calls. Well, this gave us the opportunity to automate a little bit of that. And, um, since we were so well versed in how our customers were feeling and the empathy that we needed in there and the transparency that we needed in there, it just allowed us to create some really cool automated pieces that, um, I don't know that we would have been able to create that that great of before. I mean, sure, we would have created good ones before, but these were extra special. <laughs> so um, anyway, yeah. And then you just keep doing that forever and ever and ever and ever. And you just keep evolving with the members. So I feel like I've been talking either for five minutes or 500 hours. I don't know. This is my first time doing a webinar. So thank you all for doing it along with me. Um, here's why. Well, Yep, I would. Mars, just going to say you did a great job, <laughs> and uh, I liked what you said about inspire and be inspired. Uh, that would be a nice kind of uh, positive thing to put on your uh, mirror at home. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, each morning you look and do those positive uh, kind of ideas so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I wrote that down and I also mm -hmm. like that you created uh, not only generated your own content but curated a lot of stuff uh, that is always recommended in social media but we so rarely do it because well we get tied up with other things or we we've got to push this message so right you get yeah. caught up in what you're doing yourself and you forget of all the cool stuff that's out there. Yeah. And thank you also for mentioning resort trades so often. Yes, <laughs> of course. And our, and our lunch bunches. <laughs> yes. I, I just, I think they're so cool. And um, at the beginning of this, we were talking about how, you know, sometimes you can't hop on live, even though you've registered for something live, but um, you always have a, a link to go back to it or like with resort trades you just go right to their youtube channel and get on there and um subscribe to it watch all the fabulous videos like this one right here and um yeah it's just i just love what you guys have done and i'm, well, I'm honored to be a part of it so thank You're very you very encouraging thank you so much um you know we're going to also i wanted to say uh if you uh, didn't get your resort trades yet, you can find Annie's article online. Uh, I think if it hasn't yet been posted, it will be posted very, very soon. Uh, resorttrades.com. And uh, 
this kind of wraps up, I gather, your presentation. We ready for any questions the audience might have. I noticed that Lisa Ann Schreier uh, wrote the importance of having everyone in the organization on the same page and communicate. Uh oh. Sharon is paused for me. I don't know if anyone else is paused. Maybe I'm paused. No. She's oh, getting this. Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a robot for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I had a slow down, and it's been raining a lot here in Tennessee, so. Maybe that's what happened. But anyway, Sorry, Lisa, can you the Lisa. Pardon? Can you repeat the Lisa arc? Um. Yes, I will repeat. Lisa Ann said the importance of having everyone in the organization on the same page and communicating the same message cannot be stressed enough. In my opinion, this is where organizations lose customers. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. And this, I feel like this gave us such a good opportunity to um, really create those responses and, and stick to them where before, you know, we were kind of divided in teams. And though we worked together, I feel like this opportunity gave us just a, a real quick, tight version of working together and thinking together and um, making all those responses. So um though it was stressful at times, it, it gave us a chance to do that in a way that we probably wouldn't have done before. So yeah, I totally agree, Lisa. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I was wondering if you found any, uh, did you get a lot of replies and responses from a variety of people or were they pretty much the ones that always reply mm -hmm. or always? Uh, we got, well, yes, we did get, um, you know, we would sometimes get the upset members who, if their plans had been canceled and in a way that we weren't able to fully reconcile, you know, we, we would get responses from them. But um, I found the coolest thing was we would get a lot of um, thank you responses and like the letters from the CEO that we would do. Um, you know, we've got a lot of people replying. Thank you so much for taking the time to, um, you know, tell us this and tell us that. And they really, I found that they really did seem appreciative of us doing that. And as a marketer, I mean, what more could you ask for when somebody thanks you for what you're doing? That just, that was really great. So, um, yeah, I feel like we, in addition, you know, to the normal kind of responses that you get just in day to day, we did get a lot of other people um, just really reaching out to us and and also giving us some of that empathy that I was talking about earlier, which is so nice because it just it just puts you on a human level with everybody. And it's like, I'm a person, you're a person, you know, we don't have we can we can do this together. And so, yeah, that's what I found, which was great. Well, Annie. Really appreciate your time here. I did want to mention in our January issue, there'll be another article about global connections because we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Well, us as well. You guys are awesome. And yeah, you're just a great publication. And I love your emails too. I get a lot oh. of good stuff out of there. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, we next Friday, December 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, we're looking forward to hearing about the world of finance and lending from Bill Rysick. Now, Bill is probably most people in the industry are acquainted with him. He's been in the industry for such a long time, but he is uh, a partner or a principal at Colebrook Financial Company. So we're looking forward to hearing from if him. If you're viewing this on YouTube, please be an influencer, hit the uh, subscribe button, and the bell icon, stay in touch with us, stay engaged, please. And we appreciate your uh, being with us today. Yes, thank you guys very much. All right. <music>